Well, good morning to you. Happy Friday. We made it. We made it all the way to Friday. I know. I know. Thank you. We made it to Friday. That's a, really, that's a good thing. Um, wanted to change things up just a little bit in the way we do our cup of cyber. Um, as you know, cup of cyber uh, comes out every morning. It's been fluctuating in time. I think I'm going to zero in at 7.30. I think 7.30 every morning. That's 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 number one. Um, number one. Uh, number two, you guys may have noticed in the countdown timer, the minute countdown timer, there's a scrolling bar that goes across the bottom. And uh, it's got tidbits of news. And it's been up there uh, for... Got a Norton updater. Um, it's been up there for about a week now, a little over a week. And I don't know if you guys have noticed it, if you've seen it, uh, what you think of the scrolling banner. I don't know. Maybe maybe you like it. Maybe you think, what the heck is that all about? So I thought, you know, there's so much going on in security. And you guys are here already anyways. And we're going to talk about the stuff we're going to talk about for Security Plus. We'll get there. Uh, we will. But I figure we're together now. We're having our cup of coffee. Maybe you're having your cup of Billy coffee in the th closest thing I can get to a red cup. You know, it's Friday. We wear red on Friday. That's just what we do. But I still need to get a red coffee cup. That's something I got. I got to work through and, and just break down and get on Amazon. It's so hard to get on Amazon, type a few things in, and get a red coffee cup. I think I, think I, can, I can probably handle that. I can probably handle doing that. But... I figure we could take this time, um, expand it just a little bit, and the crawl that's going across that timer, we'll just talk about those those attacks. And I don't have any cool graphics to put up anywhere for these things today because I was just I was kicking over my mind when I was putting the the scroll together this morning because those those are new events. Those are new events as of the fifteenth of May. That's the stuff that just came out, so I'd have to do it every morning, um, but not a big deal. So get up, make the. I have to get the little graphics. I think it'd be nice to have a little graphic for each of these. But um, in any case, to talk about the things on the scrolling banner. So I think we've got uh, four or five things that were down there that uh, are important. Uh, you'll know throughout your day um, that will help you talk about what's going on in security. What's new in security for today? As you know, Cup of Cy Cyber is just it's it's. The content, the slides, if you want those, those are fine. Those are sliced off and put in their own video later in the day. Uh, Jimmy does that. He takes care of that. He does great things. Um, and Mako later takes and puts all the, the things, like when we try to link to other videos above, which we're going to do today because we, we've got some cross-referencing. But since we're together, this, this is just topical. It's about what's going on May 15th, 2020. Um, and if you don't want to watch it, you don't have to. You can watch the video once it's sliced off and, and not watch Cup of Cyber. But Cup of Cyber, I think we add more cyber to the Cup of Cyber. We've got plenty of coffee, and it is good. A good cup of coffee. Um, but let's, let's look about, think about what is going on uh, in the scroll. If you watch the scroll uh, this morning, um, the first thing um, is from SC Magazine. Um, and SC Magazine is is saying that um, DHL shippers are taking uh, their scam to a new level. And they're not taking it taking it up a notch. They're actually taking it down a notch. And this is traditional phishing. So this is social engineering. Now, social engineering 101. 
Um, and if we know about phishing, we know the way that the scammer works in phishing, they're going to throw a bunch of exclamations in there. They're going to put a bunch of text. They're going to, they're going to go to urgency. They're going to go, they're going to, they're going to push you as hard as you can to get to click the link. That's what they're trying to do is, is get you to click the link. And that's the end goal. Cause when you click the link, you download the code, you go to a malicious site, whatever, whatever happens after that, the goal is to get you to click the link. And it's always been a high pressure sale. Um, but this new scam is going a different way. It's going low pressure. So um, SC Media has as an example of this this new attack. And the new attack is just, hey, DHL Express, incoming package notification has got your name on it. We just want to notify you you got a package coming in. Uh, it's got your email on it. Hey, if you want to check on the package, click the link below, and that's it. Not a big fanfare, not bunch of stuff pretty much what you'd see in one of these but it's not you got to click it now or we're gonna cancel it or we're sending it back or you're paying for this or you're gonna your 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 subscription will be canceled whatever it's none of that it's just hey you got a package click the link to check on it um, a lot of people probably would just look at this and go yeah I'm, I'm gonna check where is it at um, I don't remember ordering anything maybe somebody sent me something for my birthday I don't know so they would probably just click that link and, and figure out what's going on. So that's a new new thing. There's a new push for uh, social engineering on the social engineering side. Um, the other thing you may have seen on there, and this is from Tech Republic, um, there's a, a, new, <laughs> a new exploit, um, and it's, it's tied to that website Favicon. So if you go to a, a web, you know, on your web web browser, in the tabs, it doesn't just say Internet Explorer or Chrome or whatever in the little, it's got a little picture up there. And that's a Favicon. And and they found that there's a site that is, is it looks like it's mo not malicious. It's helping you make those Favicons so you can put them on your website. Um, and what this website does uh, is it creates the favicon, but also creates some Java code so that when a you so if you go through this service and you you use them, um, and who is it? Um, yeah, it's it's myicons.net is the the site. That's the malicious site. So if you go there and you create a favicon for your site and you put it on your site, then uh, Java code is added to your web page that creates a new PayPal form that is served up when people go to check out from your site. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the links to all this stuff and I'll put it in the description for the notes today if you want to read more about it. Um, you know, they can't, the, the researchers that, that found out about this, um, they don't know exactly what the malicious payload is, uh, but instead they say instead of serving up the image file, the my icon set server was actually loading code consisting of a credit card payment form the form is loaded dynamically and overrides the paypal checkout option with its own menu for mastercard visa discover american express in the end any credit card information entered through this is sent back to the criminals so i'll, I'll put the links to the full articles down below so the folks that wrote these articles can get the credit form but i think i'll just share the tidbits or the highlights from you um, the other thing you may have seen in the scroll is Adobe releases a new version of Acrobat for the Mac OS to patch critical vulnerabilities. Um, and it's Adobe's publishing critical updates uh, for the Mac OS today, fixing a trio of vulnerabilities re resulted, reported uh, by Tencent Security, uh, a researcher. Uh, the vulnerabilities uh, were in the system integrity protection um, and it could have allowed system level access uh, to any acrobat dc users mac so this one's a big one you want to patch this one get this one take care of you've got a mac os and you're using adobe you want to get this one checked out again i'll throw the link this one is from nine to five mac uh, cso magazine is also reporting that palo alto and cisco network appliances impacted by a Kerberos authentication bypass flaw have also been fixed. So this is a, a bypass flaw that um, 
allowed authentication bypasses and possible man in the middle attacks. Um, that flaw has been patched. Uh, go out there and get that thing fixed. If you're using Cisco or Palo Alto networks, uh, we'll throw that junk into the description below. Um, also, I think this may be our, yeah, it's our last one out of the scroll, uh, out of the crawl from today. Um, print daemon, uh, it's a vulnerability in uh, the Windows systems, all Windows systems, and this one is uh, CVE 2020-1048. Um, it looks like if someone exploits this, they're able to mess with your print spooler. They can add stuff to the print spooler, they can delete stuff out of the print spooler, they can crash the print spooler. Looks like Microsoft's rating this fairly low level. It's a low level exploit, a low level impact. Um, but you probably want to get a patch. It's part of the Patch Tuesday roll up. So patch your Windows system. As always, if you have Windows, you're going to have to patch Windows. Anybody using Windows, you're just going to have to patch Windows all the time. Um, and all the other ones, you know, Mac and Linux are no different, um, just probably at a slower pace than other systems. Um, especially Windows, Windows. You're gonna have patch Windows. Every Patch Tuesday, patch your Windows system. Keep it updated, keep it clean. Um, yeah, and that's that's the last of the the last of uh, this the crawl news. Maybe that's what maybe that's what we'll call it. Um, and today it is uh, the fifteenth. The fifteenth means it's Peace Officer Memorial Day. Um, 15th of, of every year, Peace Officer Memorial Day. Yep, we're we're celebrating law enforcement and law enforcement officials. I got a little, little cartoon down there uh, for humor, but really, it's not, I, I, I was a security cybersecurity consultant for the FBI for about seven years. I was able to be downtown DC when police weeks happens. And normally this week, the week, uh, the week that goes around Peace Officer Memorial Day. Normally this week is police week. Um, and it's it's amazing in downtown D.C. If you're downtown D.C. during police week, it's amazing. There's like, I think, 30 or 40,000 law enforcement officers come in from all over the world. So you see Great Britain and, and Israel and just police officers from not only all across the United States, but across the globe. There's police officers from everywhere in downtown DC and they're in uniform. So you'll see the Mounties and you'll see the Bobbies and you'll see the, the you know, Minnesota police officers, you see everyone. And what they're, they're here for is, is this really centering around Peace Officer Memorial Day. And normally today, the names of the law enforcement officers that were killed in the line of duty will be uh, added to the memorial downtown. And it's an amazing, I've seen the, the progression one time and I didn't know what it was, but they normally bring the families of the fallen and they have a motorcade of buses that are with the police escort through downtown DC from one side of the city to the other to the memorial. And the memorial is cool. It's a big, big circle with names. I think there's like 20 or by about 20,000 names, 20, let me look, 22,000 names on this memorial inscribed all the way around it. And it's got lions on it. It's, it's very cool. Um, and it's just this big thing. It's this, this whole police week happens, but because of COVID-19, um, it didn't happen this year. And normally tonight there would be a candlelight vigil at the memorial that would be celebrating the new names after, after they were you know, unveiled during the day. At night, they do the candlelight vigil. Um, it's virtual this year. Everything's virtual this year. They're not doing the, the normal thing. It, it's vigil. So this year, they're adding 307 new names to the memorial. Um, and it's going to be all virtual. It's the, the, the whole thing. I don't think, I don't think they've, they've done police week. I don't think they've done this, this big thing. It's another sign of what's going on with COVID. So, uh, one of the things, one of the days, you know, normally some of these days are, you know, like, you know, tomato basil day or whatever we do that, that comes up. This one's, you know, to me, it's pretty important. Um, it, it's, it's a big deal. I mean, the guys and gals are out there every day um, making sure we're safe. I don't, you know, you're always going to have a few people that, that 
you know, throw shade on what everybody else does, but the majority of police officers you're ever going to meet are doing it for the right reason. There's a, there are a few people out there that are going to make the whole thing look bad, but that's not the case. I've met and been friends with a ton of police officers. Uh, it's just because I've got a military background, served with the FBI, did consulting for the FBI for so many years, met so many people, and they're people. So you have good people, you have bad people. Most people in law enforcement are doing it for the right reason. So um, it's unfortunate that we have 307 names to add to this wall this year, um, killed in the line of duty, um, the last watch kind of thing. Uh, terrible to happen, but um, hopefully, you know, you can check it out. Check it out online. I'm sure they've got some virtual stuff. And I'll throw all of this information into the show notes below. But on to the on to. So this morning, we're going to talk about, continue talking about vulnerabilities. And vul the vulnerabilities we're going to talk about today deal with memory and buffer. Um, some of this we're going to talk about buffer overflow. And when we talk about buffer overflow, I'm probably just going to high level cover that because we've got a whole video on buffer overflow. But some of this other stuff is kind of kind of quirky, kind of weird. I think there's five different types we're going to talk about this morning. Um, so let's throw up the, the cup of cyber intro thing. I'll drink my cup of coffee. Um, before I do that, though, I want to know from you guys. Do we want to expand this little cup of cyber part or just cut it off or, or make it shorter? How, how do you see it going? This morning was a little bit rough. Um, didn't have everything prepared the way I wanted to because it kind of just came to me. Uh, do we do we want to throw up? Throw, I can't. It makes me laugh every time I say it. Do we want to add this bit of detail? What's going on for that day? What's new that day uh, in your morning cup of cyber? That way, maybe you just got it when you're going around work. During during work, you'll know the events of the day. Someone say, hey, you know about this Microsoft bug? Yeah, it's not that bad. It's We need to fix it, but it's not terrible. You know about the Cisco bug? Oh, yeah, we need to fix that thing. It's pretty bad. We need to take care of that man in the middle. Oh, we worry about that. Um, and then it's Police Officer Memorial Day. Um, let me know in the comments below. I'd lo love to hear what you have to say about that. Um, roll up the news. I'll give you the links to everything if you want to read further. Um, and we'll just go from there. Uh, let me know if it works. Um, as always, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you later, but I'm going to tell you now. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. I got to get that right. Hit the bell to be notified. Share with your friends. We want to get more people in here. We want more people to know about cybersecurity. So, that being said, let's roll the intro. I'm Jim with Cyber Recon, and this morning we're going to continue our tri trip. <laughs> this morning we're going to continue our trip down the Security Plus preparation path, talking more about vulnerabilities. And this morning we're talking about, and today <laughs> we're talking about memory and buffer vulnerability. So, with that being said, let's jump into the slide deck. This is part of uh, topic 1.6. Um, but this specifically, we're talking about memory and buffer vulnerabilities. So uh, when we talk about these, there's a few we want to zero in on. So first up the list is memory leaks. And we talked about memory leaks a little bit earlier when we were talking about pure vulnerabilities. So uh, Wikipedia tells us in computer science, a memory leak is a type of resource leak that occurs when a computer program incorrectly manages memories, allocations such as the way memory, which is no longer needed, is released. Um, talk about this garbage collection, cleaning up memory, uh, zeroing out memory when the when the program is done running. So if we think about a program running, what's going to happen is it's going to store variables, it's going to store objects, it's going to actually occupy space in the memory of your computer, in the RAM space. So if you've got a, an allocated space for this program to run, and, and maybe you've got a, a several megabytes of memory where variables be, be stored. We'll say x equals 20 and y equals a, a banana boat, uh, whatever. That goes into memory and it stays there. Now, if the program doesn't clean that up when it's done running, the next time it runs, it's going to set up a whole new set of variables. And that's going to occupy new space. And as we do this over time, the space gets allocated, but it never gets cleaned up. And pretty soon, you run out of space. That's just it. We we add stuff to, to the memory, and we don't ever clean it out. We, we don't need it. So um, programs are developed that do not remove mem um, remove items from memory when it's no longer used. 
Um, Memory gets exhausted, and sometimes we have slow performance, and in worst cases, the system will just totally crash. So we want to make sure that our developers develop code that cleans up memory. A lot of times they call it garbage collection. Um, but clean it up and, and make sure it's, it cleaned up. If you've got a program you bought, maybe this happens in, make sure you patch it, you keep it updated, you, you keep it current. Um, Next thing we'll talk about, we talked about buffer overflows before. This is an integer overflow, and it's just a little bit different. So Wikipedia, again, we go to it. In computer programming, an integer overflow occurs when an arithmetic, arithmetic operation attempts to create a numeric value that is outside the range that can be represented within a given number of digits, either higher than the maximum number or lower than the minimum representational value. Um, you know, and we don't, we're not overflowing memory, right? So we do have buffer, uh, we have protections around the buffer, the, the buffer space, right? So we've got memory protection in place. So in this case, we've got, I think, seven nines there, right? That's our odometer analogy we're talking about. Our space is big enough for seven nines. And we think about the old school odometer that had just seven dials, seven numbers on it. So each one was a dial, and as the dial turned, when it got to seven nines, when it went to the next number, it rolled over to zeros, right? And that's really what we're talking about here. We're not overflowing into the next memory space, but the memory is not, there, there's no way that error, error checking is put in place. Error checking has not been put in place to look for this. So when we go from uh, seven nines we add one to it, it rolls over to all zeros. Not what we expected, not what we want the program to do in most cases. Like a clock or a timer, maybe we do. We hit 24, we want to go back down to zero and we want to start over. Most programs, we don't want to do that. We want the counter to work right, right? So in some cases, like our odometer analogy, it goes to 99999. Uh, when it hits the next number, it goes to zeros, right? Um, that that's possible, um, then that's saturation, right? We saturated the number, we go back to zero. Um, some will roll over to a, some programming languages will roll over to a negative number. So now it'll start going backwards, um, which in e either case is gonna mess up the logic of the program, right? So if we think it's going to be uh, 1 million and it turns back to uh, zero, or thing in this case is 10 million, it goes back to zero, that's gonna mess up the logic of the program. Maybe it's gonna, send money the wrong place, maybe it's gonna to add too much money or too little money to someone's account, whatever's gonna happen, this is an integer overflow. And if we think about the odometer analogy, 99999, when you get that next mile, it goes back to zeros. Um, doesn't mean your car's brand new, doesn't mean you have no miles on the car, doesn't mean you're not gonna have problems anymore, it just means your odometer's wrong now. And that's what's going on in the program. Uh, the odometer in the program is wrong. Buffer overflow, we're not gonna spend a bunch of time on buffer overflow, because I will throw up there, actually throw up there, the link to the full uh, explanation of buffer overflow. So we got a whole video on buffer overflow because it is so important. It's so important we wanna cover buffer overflow in its entirety. But NIST defines this as a condition at an interface under which more input, input can be placed into buffer or data holding area than the capacity allocated overriding other inform information. Adversaries exploit such a condition to crash a system or to insert specifically crafted code that allows them to gain control of the system. So really we're talking the same thing we're talking about in the integer overflow, right? But instead of that seven character space, we still have the space allocation, but the programmer hasn't, hasn't kept the input from being larger. So if we put 10 characters in there, those three other characters aren't just rolled over, they're put into another space in memory. So check this video out. Goes in depth in buffer overflow, including some good graphical representations of how it works. Um, this is an input validation error. Um, a value is placed into a variable that is larger than allowed by that buffer space. And that's, I'll leave it to that because if you want to check that video out, really we're just, we're overflowing into another area of memory. Um, and if I'm an attacker and I can do that right, I can maybe overwrite the login procedure with something that I can use to exploit the system. So that's buffer overflow. There's a whole bunch to know. We need to know, got to know this 
Got to know buffer overflow if you're going to work in security. Definitely got to know this if you're going to pass the Security Plus exam. Um, pointer dereferencing. Um, pointer dereferencing is very important um, if, if we want to use something like a null pointer dereference. Um, and this is weird. This is, this, this is because programmers are weird. Um, this is, this is I, I, again, history lesson. Uh, I got a degree in programming, realized by going through and getting a degree in programming that I could not be a programmer. This is one of the reasons why. Um, some languages refer to a variable storage location or a memory address as a by by a pointer, right? So it, it's it, to me it always seemed like we are we're, we're enabling something twice. Uh, so, anyways, let, let, we'll walk through this, right? Um, to get the value, the pointer accesses that area of memory in a process called dereferencing, which the, the name is weird just to start with. But anyways, this is the way it looks like in a program. So a programmer will assign a variable a specific value. So in this case, we're saying x in our program is going to equal 5, right? So in memory, x equals 5 will be stored in a memory location. And arbitrarily, I said 0 by x, uh, 0 x 0 is our um, memory storage location. That's just a location in memory. We're putting this value x equals 5, right? So later we can use a pointer and a pointer will point to that memory location um, and pull its value out. So in this case we're saying p and if we say that ampersand x that's just saying for the, va for the variable p that pointer, for that pointer I should say, we're pointing to whatever the memory space is that x is kept in. So in this case, we're saying the pointer p is pointing at 0, x, 0. And we've got to store this as well. So we're going to store this in the next memory space because that's the next line in our program, right? So that's going to store p equals ampersand x, and we're going to put that in 0, x, 1, right? So now p is, is pointing at that memory allocation space. It's not really pointing at x, it's pointing at 0x0, that memory, that block of storage space. Um, so I can go in, I can say uh, uh, star p, which re will, will say I'm referencing that pointer, uh, equals 10. And that will change the value of x to 10, because it's going to change that memory allocation space. Um, I can also pull the value from that memory space by saying, um, you know, y equals p. Um, and it'll go, it'll go to that memory space and it'll pull whatever value is there out. Um, if I'm an attacker and I can get in there and I can delete the data in 0x0, zero zero, right? I'm not saying turn it to 0. I'm not saying, I'm not saying make x equals 0. I'm saying getting rid of the data altogether in that memory space. When the pointer goes to pull the data from 0x0, zero zero, there's no, no data there. It's called a null pointer reference. And the program, more than likely, is going to crash because it doesn't know what to do. Um, again, this is a weird thing with programming. I, I know there's probably a ton of reasons why you want to do this. It just seems weird to me that we're going to say x equals 5, and then we're going to have a pointer point at that memory allocation space instead of just pointing at x. That's just me. Um, I know there's ton programmers. You probably, if there's anybody who does programming out there, throw the comment below. Tell me I have not wrong. Um, uh, it just always seems weird to me, but it seems it could be cleaner. But I'm sure there's a ton of reasons why we use this pointer uh, uh, referencing. And, and it's not really another thing that's weird about this is when we call that value, when we say p equals ampersand x, or we point to that value and get the value out of of the memory space, it doesn't really take it out of it. It caught, pulls the value out. It's still there. It's still in memory. But we call that pointer dereferencing. When we when we say p equals uh, ampersand x, we call that pointer dereferencing. Again, uh, it's programming. It's just what programmers do. Um, DLL injection, our last stop this morning. Uh, dynamic linked libraries. This is a Windows thing. And Wikipedia is going to tell us dynamic linked 
library or DLL is Microsoft's implementation of the shared library concept in the Microsoft and Windows OS 2 operating system. Um, and this is this is the, the concept is great. This means that I don't write a bunch of new codes. I, I have libraries that I use. And so maybe I have a library that is the conversion rate of the dollar to the British pound sterling. Um, and I create that library and I keep it updated. And a bunch of other programs can, they don't have to write that function. They can just point to that library. And that's a dynamically linked library, which is great. So we can create a program. We can create it much faster now because we can link to libraries, link to functions. We can pull them in instead of writing them from scratch. Great in a company because we can build all these libraries that do a lot of functions, functionality for the core business. And if something changes, like we know that, um, you know, maybe when the, the pound sterling went away, it went to the euro, we had to change that library. When the, when the, when they went away from the, the euro back to the pound sterling, okay, we can change that library again. And we don't have to change the hundred programs that are linked to it. We change that one library. Um, a bad thing happens if an attacker is able to build a library, uh, and get programs to link to it. Um, so these are additional libraries that, are, that can be added to a program that link to vulnerabilities that can be used by the attacker to compromise the system. Great process. This, is this again, goes against what we were saying earlier with dereferencing. Still, let me know what you think about dereferencing. But this is great. This is We build the library one time, we, we set it, and then we just call it all the time. <coughs> Excuse me. As long as that library is good, every program that's using is good. And if we have to make a correction to the library, we update it one time and it fixes all 100 programs. Great, great way of doing things. Um, let me know what you think about programming. That's the concepts for today. That's what we're talking about today. Um, as always, uh, I'm Jim with Cyber Recon, facing you know, for the, the, the people that helped me. Uh, a thanks this week to Emily Mako and Jimmy, who's going to fix all my mistakes from this morning. Um, I appreciate it. If you would like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified, share with your friends. Um, and I guess, you know, at this point, Jimmy, you can cut the rest of this off. But if you're still here, uh, Trivia Night is next Friday. Um, I would like to, yeah, I was supposed to get some information uh, from Mike Bravo, who won, who actually smoked trivia last week. we got to get him his prizes. Um, we're going to update the prize list for next Friday, the 22nd. New round of trivia. Um, new stuff for you. Are, 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 can you dethrone Mike Bravo? Can you can you knock Mike Bravo, airborne infantryman, off of his, his pedestal? He's up there. He's raining high, airborne all the way, getting this thing going. Can you dethrone him? Um, let's see. That's trivia night next, next Friday, 22nd, uh, 7 PM East coast time. You don't have to subscribe to anything. You don't have to pay for anything. You don't have to give any type of personal information up. Um, you have to, you'll, you'll have to use the Socrative app, which I think is pretty cool. Um, that's how we keep track of the scores. That's the only reason we do it. There's, you put Cyber Recon down as the room name. You put down the name you want to use. The rules are all available at cyberrecon.com front slash trivia. Um, and we'd love to see you there. I don't know. I, I'm, my money's on Mike Bravo. I think he's gonna think he's gonna get it this this next week as well. He was smoking it. So can you dethrone him? Can you dethrone Mike Bravo? And if you are Mike Bravo, PM me. I need your information to get your prizes out, man. That being said, enjoy the weekend and be safe out there.